Macca's Guides. <laughs> Hey everyone, Maka here. Welcome back to my Doom Eternal The Ancient Gods DLC 100% game walkthrough. In this video series, I've been taking you through the missions. This is the third and final mission called The Halt, and there will be a giant boss battle at the end, but I'll make sure to show you all the collectibles, all of the extra live pickups you might want to grab on your way through, and we'll talk a little bit of some of the new enemy types, including this enemy type, the Blood Mare. Now the way they work is that when they glow gold, they are basically invincible, and the only way to kill them is when they are doing a major attack. You can basically shoot them, I would recommend, with the assault rifle or the heavy rifle, whatever it's called in this game, and just line up a precision shot and try to get them on the head. But I think if you hit them in the body, it will still usually count, at least it does for me. This enemy type is gonna be incredibly annoying, and you definitely wanna focus on them. Uh, because when they hit you, they hit you for a lot, and they usually don't miss. So you either want to be actively hiding from that enemy type, or instead you want to just take them out whenever they do open themselves up for an attack. There are some cases where you will ignore them, but you're basically going to be running away from them. Now, this mission is extremely tough. There are a lot of really tough fights, but luckily there is some BFG ammo we'll be picking up, so... You should have a decent chunk of BFG ammo. You might want to save two for the final boss battle. But we'll also have a couple of pickups on the map, which should help. After that first little fight, you can wall climb to get, you know, through the next path and work your way a little bit further into the level. A lot of little fights, a lot of big fights, and you're definitely going to want to manage your ammo pretty well. I would say that ammo, in my opinion, is kind of the hardest part of this mission and where I struggled the most. It was very hard to maintain a decent amount of the ammo types that I liked, and I also found that it was hard to maintain full health. Now, as soon as we come across these levitating platforms, watch out, this jump can actually make you lose a decent amount of health if you mess up a couple of times. We'll kind of get into our first big battle, and a ton of things will be thrown at you. There will be enemies that are, uh, you know, they have the spirit within them. There will be that new Blood Mare enemy that is constantly trying to use major powers on you and does a ton of health. There will be Marauders, there will be huge enemies all over the place. Basically what I would recommend is try to stay up top when you're actively doing damage and you feel like you're doing a good job. If you do however start taking a lot of damage or you want to kind of separate one of the bigger enemies from the rest of the group, Switch from upstairs to downstairs, and the really aggressive enemies will follow you down there, but all of the other enemies will kind of just stay up on top, so it's a good way to separate everyone into kind of two groups, especially once the Marauder spawns. I probably wouldn't recommend using a BFG ammo at this point, but if you do, it wouldn't be the end of the world. However, I would probably recommend it in one of the later fights instead. It's up to you. Otherwise, for this, I don't really have too many tips, other than making sure you bring the Marauder downstairs once it spawns, and trying to stay alive as much as possible using that super shotgun to generate yourself armor when you need it. There are also a couple of health, health pickups downstairs, and there is an armor pickup upstairs by the portal. The portal is a pretty useful uh, thing to kind of have handy as well, just in case you feel like you're getting chased. You can go through that portal and kind of lose the enemies for a couple of seconds.
Now you want to try to end this fight with decent ammo because there will be a secret encounter coming up and it's pretty useful to have a lot of rockets and stuff. So use that chainsaw if you have it and try to set yourself up for success in the future. Once you do kill all of the enemies, you can do a quick roundabout on the bottom and top just to pick up any ammo and health you may have missed. And we are now free to leave out of the newly opened door. There are a couple of things here. You may notice a Slayer key above you. We can't grab it at this exact second. But if we move forward and stay to the left, we can find an Extra Life 1-Up. I'm going to temporarily ignore it as I work on taking out this Empowered Mancubus. And what I believe are maybe the most annoying enemies in this level, the Shield Guys, which I believe are called Carcasses, if I'm not mistaken. I'm really bad with the Doom uh, enemy name terminology, if you haven't noticed, watching this series. I like to think I'm decent at the game itself, but don't know a lot about the enemy names. But from that tree where we can knock it down, if you were to just continue down looking forward from where we came, you can follow this path and find an extra life 1-up. If you go down this path, though, it will spawn to Barons, I believe, and you'll have to take care of them. So if you have very little health or very little ammo... You may want to not even pick up that extra life. It is up to you. And then once we exit out of this cave we were just in, you can now knock down the tree and use it to get upstairs. There's going to be like three or four collectibles here all right in a row. So we grab that extra life. We're now going to go up the tree, jump to the ledge, and then turn left and jump onto the next ledge. Use this ledge to jump back towards the direction we came from, and you can now access the Slayer Gate key which you previously couldn't. Then you can go back to that tree and climb it up, jump up on that ledge again, and then once you get here, turn left and jump up onto the next ledge. Follow the path going forward. You'll notice a breakable wall. Go through that breakable wall to find another extra life, and we can grab it. At this point, what we can do is jump back down to that main path, but stay along the right side of the path, and here you'll find another breakable wall. Break your way on through it to find our first secret encounter. For this one, I would recommend using the rocket launcher and the super shotgun. The main enemy you want to focus on as soon as you can is the spirited cyber mancubus. It will take like 12 rockets to take this guy down. So you can use that as well as a combination of grenades, blood punches, and your shotgun. As soon as they are killed, they will have the spirit come out of them. But if you're quick and ignore the spirit, you can actually just take out all of the other enemies and the spirit won't have enough time to grab into them. And you can easily finish this one with 15 or more seconds left over. At this point, we can continue along the path towards the checkpoint and there will be a small battle with a few enemies. Here, you just wanna work on building up your ammo. You can also find a auto map in this room and you can find the Slayer Gate itself which we picked up the key to a little bit earlier. The auto map will be on the opposite side of where we enter but I would recommend focusing on the enemies first. The hardest enemy will probably be the Arachnotron with the spirit inside of it so make sure you take care of that spirit as soon as that is available. Clear out all of the enemies, try to get all of your health back Try to get as much ammo as possible. The Slayer Gate coming up is easily the hardest Slayer Gate in Doom Eternal, campaign and DLC included. With all of the enemies taken care of, I'm going to quickly grab the auto map. You can grab the auto map after the Slayer Gate, but I'm just going to grab it now since we're here. Grab that, and if you head back towards the direction of where we entered the room, you'll see a swing bar. That's the swing bar we use to actually proceed through the map. But just next to that is a gate, and that is the Slayer Gate. We'll use the Slayer Gate key in that Slayer Gate, not far from the malleable tree we'll need to knock down to make progress. Enter on in, and if you have both of your BFG ammo, I would highly recommend using one of them during this Slayer Gate. 
it is a long Slayer Gate, and it is exceptionally difficult, in my opinion. You may disagree, and that's totally a-okay, but it's very easy to get overrun by enemies extremely quickly. You can make quick work of the enemies, and the BFG bullet will really help you with that, but it's also really easy to get caught in a corner with a Marauder uh, hitting you, the Tiger of the Marauder hitting you, a spirited enemy hitting you, and like four or five priests all shooting at you at the same time. And there will be lots of blood mares, which are those golden priests that are basically invincible unless they open up for the attack. So for this, the strategy is just to move a lot. And whenever there is a blood mare available, I would highly recommend taking them out with that uh, precision bolt as quickly as possible. Uh, they are a menace and they basically don't miss when they shoot at you So it is pretty advantageous to get rid of them and you can also uh, They're also really 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 useful because they generate ammo every time you kill them So you don't have to use your chainsaw as much um, in To generate your ammo instead you can use this enemy type which is really useful once the marauder spawns and a bunch of enemies spawn you can use that BFG up to you you don't have to. I end up not using a BFG in one of these fights, and I end up having an ammo of BFG that I never end up needing to use that just sits there later on in this walkthrough. So you might as well use it as we're going to get a refill kind of soon. Once you complete the Slayer Gate, you will get a checkpoint and you will exit out. You will get your final support rune if you've been following along, which will also grant you an achievement or a trophy. So that's kind of exciting. And you'll probably be unlocking a support rune you really don't care about, as you probably already have the two that you wanted uh, in the first two options we had. At this point, we can now move on. Our Slayer Gates are nice and done. We do have some Codex pages left over and a secret encounter, which we will do pretty soon here. Now, if you walk forward and continue along the main path, you'll notice the breakable, breakable tree. You'll have to do a couple of swings, a little bit of platforming here. I'll rejoin you with commentary in a couple.
As we make our way through the level, we'll do this big fight and there will be a couple of things we can grab up here, but there will be a breakable tree that you need to hit. And this is actually somewhere that stumped me for a little bit. After you break down the tree, we have to actually melee it again. But instead, I'm going to drop down and basically just jump right off the cliff in front of you. And you can find a codex page just chilling by itself down here. We'll need to grab this, obviously, if we want to get everything in the mission. So make sure you grab it, and then you can, you know, work your way back up, pick up any shotgun ammo. And once you make your way up onto this tree that we already knocked down once, we actually have to melee it again. There will be a pinky that spawns as you approach, so just take care of it with a quick tail gun shot. And jump back on the log, and you can now scale across the gap that you couldn't have prior this actually stumped me for like a couple of solid minutes, and I assume some people watching also had, uh, you know, felt that that was a little bit tricky. From here, what we can do is jump down. You'll notice that there is a platform we have to land on with a double level up to the left through a small laser field. What we need to do to get into here is to jump on the platforms from the first or second platform, look to the left into the wall where we can break through it. And here you can follow along to get your two lives up. At this point, I'm at four. Let me know in the comments if you have more than me. If you're playing on normal difficulty, that is pretty impressive in my opinion. Here we can just navigate the platforms to the next room though. Now this fight is somewhat simple, but kind of sucks at the same time. There are a couple of these invisible whiplash enemies that come out, which I find incredibly annoying, and they actually hit extremely hard. One of the reasons they're annoying is because you can't lock onto them with your super shotgun or your rockets, and they're really fast, really aggressive, and hit really hard, and from very far away. But if you can take care of everyone in the room, uh, it will open up the next door. Once the door opens up, this is our next little battle arena. I'm going to show you that if you drop down and look left, there is a supercharge. I'm going to pick it up for the purpose of the video, but if you have pretty decent health and armor, I would actually save it as this fight can get pretty intense and you might want to come back and pick up that supercharge later on. Now, this is a two or three stage fight, however you want to call, you know, it really semantics. But during the first stage, you're going to melee a block. A couple of caco demons will come out. You have to make sure to stay on the platform and take them all out. You can then melee the second platform, and you'll have to stay on the bottom floor and make sure to take out all of the enemies there. There will be a couple of spirit enemies and a couple of tougher opponents. But if you move around, you can use a lot of the platforms as cover. So that's pretty useful. Additionally, right after this fight, there will be a BFG ammo pickup. If you are full on BFG ammo, you might as well use it. I told you to use it in a fight prior that was harder, but if for whatever reason you didn't listen and you have two BFG ammo in your BFG, just use one of them at some point during this fight or else you're basically wasting it. Similar to how I am in my own video because I actually end up not using my BFG and having leftovers. Anyways, get through the fight, and we can basically grab that BFG ammo on our way out.
With all of the platforms meleeed, we are now ready to leave if we want, but there is a BFG ammo pickup on the opposite side of the exit of the area through a breakable wall. So make sure you go inside and grab it if you have space for it, unlike me, who basically is just making my life harder. At this point, you can now jump through the hole and continue to proceed through the levels using the checkpoints. As you reach this point, there are two things you want to grab before pushing the button. On the left hand side, you can go up some floating rocks to grab a supercharge, which will get you to max health and max armor, pretty useful. And on the opposite side, you can pick up a codex page. Make sure you pick up that codex page, press the button and shoot on over. He clearly doesn't know what you did in the swamp. Maybe he thinks you're here to help him. Now, this fight is very difficult, in my opinion. There are a lot of enemies and a lot going on, but luckily there is more BFG ammo at the top of this area. And because we leave this area after this fight, if you have full BFG ammo, I would highly recommend saving one and using it at some point during this fight. There will be a lot of large enemies that spawn near the end, so if you ever find yourself overcrowded or, you know, struggling for health and ammo, you can grab that BFG and use it when you prefer. You'll see that I use it once a couple of the really big enemies spawn, and I also believe there is a spirit chasing me and I was just kind of getting assaulted from all sides, so that's why I ended up using it. And, you know, with that BFG ammo bullet just sitting there, you might as well, especially if you're full on ammo. For this fight, just move around a lot. There will be a Marauder. Just separate yourself from all of the other enemies when they spawn, so you don't have to worry about too many different things at once. And once you clear it out, you should be good to go. Again, this one's one of the harder ones. You may or may not lose a life on this one, depending on how you play. There are a lot of um, health and armor pickups, though, so that makes it a little bit easier.
with all of the enemies taken care of, you will unlock a checkpoint. At this point, you may want to go around and just pick up any ammo you may be missing, pick up some armor and health, and we are on to some of the next stuff. There is a very important uh, secret encounter coming up, so go through the door towards the objective. There's kind of what looks to be an elevator button. We'll click the elevator button and then look up, and you can shoot a small panel in the roof, and this will open up the Slayer Gate behind you. This Slayer Gate is pretty tough, but not impossible. You will want access to the Precision Bolt as well as a Super Shotgun Ballista combo. We will be fighting a Marauder, so you gotta be pretty quick on this one. As soon as you pull out the heart, just sprint back to where we came from and take out the Blood Mayor first as soon as they come out of their ability. And then what we'll do is we'll just work on the Marauder with that one-two punch that I love so much. The one-two punch, for anyone wondering, is the super shotgun to ballista combo. Again, we have to be pretty quick. We only have about 30 seconds to work on this Marauder, so uh, you gotta be quick. Additionally, there are two small enemies that spawn, so you gotta make sure you have enough time to grab them. But I was able to do it with over 10 seconds left over, so I believe in you, and I believe you could do it even faster than me. At this point, now that we've activated the final secret encounter, you should unlock an achievement or a trophy called Hypersonic. Congratulations, I already had it unlocked uh, on a previous playthrough. But at this point, we are also ready to move on to the checkpoint and go upstairs for a little bit. Once we reach this kind of long walkway, go towards the checkpoint, and on the left of the room, there is a codex page. Make sure you grab it. Then you will push a button, and there is a very difficult section coming up here, and a BFG ammo coming up pretty soon, so I'd recommend getting that BFG out and using at least one bullet if you are full and have two bullets. After clicking the button, move down the bridge and go to the right-hand side. Two of these enemies will spawn. One of them will have the spirit inside of them. So I'm going to quickly focus on the one that doesn't. I'm going to unload 13 rockets and a shoot super shotgun into them to take them out. And then I'm going to be basically running away like a little scaredy cat from the spirited one for a little while here. But as you work your way down the bridge, a Doom Hunter will also spawn. So I would recommend using your blood punches on them to get them off their sled. But you can also use that one BFG ammo like you just saw me use. At this point, it's just a matter of managing your health and everything, watching out for these enemies. I just like to move back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And then make sure you can separate yourself from all of the enemies in order to take out the blood mare which does spawn and can be quite a hassle. I don't remember if I do lose a life here or not. I don't think I do, but if I do, oh well. Uh, just keep your distance from as much as possible and take out the blood mare when you can. You should be good. After taking out all of the enemies, you can choose between a left door and a right door, and I would highly recommend the left door. It's a different fight, and this one's way easier. As you come in, there will be a supercharge on your left. You can grab it or keep it for later, and like seven pinkies will spawn, but you'll also have like a ton of blood punch pickups. That what That's what these yellow things are. And when you use a blood punch on a group of pinkies, they basically all die immediately, which is very useful. Two cyber mancubus will also spawn as well as a blood mare, but take your time on them and we should be good to go.
After completing the room, don't forget to mop up on anything you may have missed, like extra health, blood punches, or chainsaw fuel. And we can now exit out. There will be a BFG ammo coming up soon, but before that, we're also going to grab a codex page. As you exit out here, you should notice a malleable block in front of you. If you melee it, it turns on the push plate, which you can then shoot the uh, green target, which will bring out the swing bar, and we can swing to the end. Don't actually go through forward after you do this, as we actually have to swing ourselves back to where we came from. So turn around as soon as you land, and you can shoot the back side of the target here, and we can now work our way back to where the melee block was, and jump to the back middle platform. This door will now open, even though it previously didn't. Here we can find a secret codex page. Make sure you grab it. At this point, we are now ready to make our way back to where we, you know, where we just kind of went. So melee the block, use the push plate, uh, shoot the target, and get inside of this room. This room has a ton of health, armor, and stuff like that. A BFG bullet, which you obviously are going to want, and the last codex page we need in order to grab all of the collectibles. You should unlock another achievement here. Mine will unlock on screen this time as I saved it for this playthrough. Grab all of the ammo, armor, health, and everything you need. There is only one thing left to do, and that is to do the final boss battle, which I believe is exceptionally difficult. But there are a couple of tricks that make it a lot easier. During the first phase, I would recommend using the rocket launcher, but only shoot at the boss when the boss is shooting at you. If you don't wait for them to shoot at you, the likelihood that they disappear as your rockets go through the air is exceptionally high, so you're basically wasting rockets. At some points during the fight, the boss will also spawn a couple of eyeballs, and they will constantly chase you, slow you down, and do damage over time. Now it's up to you how you treat these. You can take these eyeballs out, or you can actually just ignore them as long as you're far away from them. Damaging the boss isn't a bad strategy when these ball when these eyeballs are far away from you. And after you get the first health bar drained, you will complete phase one. With that out of the way, we can start Phase 2. Phase 2 has two spirited enemies, and these spirited enemies provide a shield for the boss. What we need to do is kill both of the spirits, which will open up the boss for a melee attack. You can, if you really want, use one of your BFGs here, but I'd probably just recommend saving it for the final phase, which I believe is a lot harder. Now, use your rocket launcher to focus on one of the two enemies. Up to you which one, but I found that the Baron was faster and more aggressive, so that's where I focused most of my attention. Keep in mind, after you do kill the Baron, it will respawn without a spirit, but it does still respawn. Make sure you kill the spirit as soon as it comes out as well. Don't forget, because it will go back into the new Baron once that Baron spawns. And then, once you get both of the spirits completely dead, you will open up the boss for a melee attack, which will complete phase two. Now we have phase three, which I believe is my least favorite phase. There will be these kind of flame pods that take turns going off and the boss will be behind some glass and they will be sending in caco demons to try to kill you. And you're gonna have to basically kill them so that they don't damage you. You really wanna save as much health as possible for the final phases. 
so try not to get hurt too much don't worry there is a supercharge coming up which will help replenish our health but i like to keep it on the map for as long as possible and not burn it at some point during this phase a grid of lasers will also show up and these lasers will hurt you pretty aggressively so make sure you are jumping over them accordingly and watching out for the fire and the caco demons Once you complete that phase, the floor of the battlefield will rise up and the boss will rejoin you in the room. Use your rockets to only shoot the boss when the boss is shooting at you and the boss moves a lot faster this time around so you'll only get to do one kind of lock-on per every cycle. Additionally, a bunch of enemies will spawn at the same time including a couple of the blood mares which are those golden enemies that are basically resistant to shots and the boss will also spawn eyeballs that will chase you around. Use the blood mare to regenerate your ammo, that's really important, and you can just try to escape from them when they're not really close to you. Try to focus on the boss though as much as possible, as this phase will end early if you're able to kill the boss quickly, and just trying to kill all the enemies around the boss just makes everything last longer and makes you more likely to die. Once you drain the boss's health, you will start the last phase, which is basically the same as the phase before, but there are also two spirited enemies. Luckily, I've saved both of my BFG ammo for this exact part. Feel free to space out your BFG however you prefer. I found that the BFG actually doesn't do a lot of damage against these uh, spirited enemies, but it seems to have helped just kind of clear up a little bit of confusion around me just to leave me an opening. I like to focus on the enemy with the big knife arms as my first enemy, and as soon as I take out the spirit, I'm gonna make sure to explode it, watching out for the blood mare as well as the pain elemental and the lasers. It can be very easy to lose a lot of health right as you start this section. You can use your other BFG bullet just to try to clear some enemies. Mine didn't do as much damage as I would have hoped, but at this point, just focus as aggressively as possible on the pain elemental. Use your ballista, your rocket launchers, and there is health uh, and armor in the corners. You can also get that supercharge from the top middle if you've been smart enough to save it for this particular instance. As soon as you take out that pain elemental, the spirit will escape. And if you're able to destroy that spirit while still, you know, maintaining your health, you will basically end the boss battle. You'll get a super dope cutscene, which I won't spoil in this video. Unfortunately, I did lose a life right there, which was pretty sucky, as I was pretty much done the fight and just trying to get through the portal. Being up top is also pretty useful for the pain elemental, but as soon as it's done, it's done. You'll unlock an achievement. If you did it with no lives, if you did it with five lives or more in extra lives mode, you'll get an extra achievement. Thank you so much for watching the video series. If you enjoyed it, please leave a comment. Share this video with a friend, leave a like, and hopefully I see you soon. A special thanks to everyone on Patreon for supporting the show. Peace.